Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, welcome to the Duly Leadership Workshop. I'm very thrilled about today's topic that's entitled Leading from Any Seat. Please note that this program is being recorded and will be available to you sequentially after the viewing. It will be made available on the DLE YouTube channel. So please keep your microphone muted during the presentation. I am Michelle Ware and I am a member of the Dooley Programming Committee. I am based in Wheaton, Illinois, where I am a Senior Global Program Manager Leader at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I will be moder moderating today's workshop along with my fellow programming committee member, Nick Rozo. Nick is a senior transportation planner at the Birchers Regional Planning Commission in Pensfield, Massachusetts. So to maximize everyone learning experience, we have some core DLE ground rules. First, Please use the chat box for your comments and questions that are topic related. Nick will be monitoring the chat and will surface any comments or questions to myself and our guest speaker, Candice Washington, during the program. Every DLE programming is an opportunity to grow your network. So in the spirits of doing so, and making connections, uh, you can type in, in the chat box, your name, your title, the organization that you're currently working at, and then also where you located. Great, they're all coming in here. So uh, thank you for um, being able to post those in there. It's great to see the diversity among our participants and welcome to our newcomers. We have a few newcomers with us, so welcome. As another opportunity to broaden your network, you may want to add a new colleague that you meet during today's program to your LinkedIn profile so together you can stay connected. So moving on with a few more ground rules, do your best to minimize your distraction. As I mentioned, today's workshop is intended for, to transform your workplace experience. So I strongly encourage you to have a pen and a notepad handy so you're able to take notes and actively participate. You will have an opportunity to ask questions to Candice after her presentation. In the meanwhile, I encourage you to type into the chat any questions or comments that you will have throughout the workshop. So at the end of our time, we'll be able to address them. And finally, Upon completion of this workshop, we'll be able to send out a poll to you via a link. We're asking that you take a few minutes to provide your feedback or comments to the workshop. And in appreciation of you doing so, we'll send you a bonus resource that was prepared by Candice to help support you as you implement your new tools and techniques into advancing in the workplace. So thank you. And next, we're going to go ahead and turn it back over to Nick. Nick. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Um, a reminder for those of you uh, who've joined us in the meantime, please type your name, title, company, or organization, and your location into the chat box if you haven't done so already. Um, and while you're introducing yourselves in the chat, please also take a few seconds to answer our uh, live polling to kickstart Candace's session. Question is, which one of these career seats, which one of these career seats most closely represents your current story or situation? Are you the early careerist, new in your career, looking to make a significant impact? Would you say you are an emerging leader wanting to advance in your career? Or a mid-level careerist desiring to change your career with the great resignation? And then I have a second question of how confident are you in your ability to lead from your current seat? Are you either very confident, somewhat confident, or not at all confident? And we'll move on to welcoming Candace, leadership and professional development guru, Candace D. Washington, empowers emerging leaders with professional development skills to accelerate performance, take ownership of their growth, and thrive at their highest levels. Her career experience spans Fortune 500 corporations, academia, and not-for-profit. Prior to founding Pivotal Impact in 2016, Candace 
served as Senior Lead of Training and Development at the University of Chicago. She's an alum of University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and received her MBA with emphasis in learning and development from Roosevelt University. A keynote speaker with deep-seated learning and development roots, Candace's early career experiences as a rising leader included many setbacks that inspired her to hone interpersonal skills and relationship building strategies for on-the-job success. <clears throat> Candace established her firm with the mission of helping mid-sized and fast-growing organizations empower young professionals and rising leaders with essential professional development tools and inclusive cultures that drive performance, innovation, and belonging. Her clients include CIBC, the University of Chicago, the National Urban League, AmeriCorps, University of Illinois, and other notable organizations committed to helping their people thrive. So welcome, Candice, and we're so excited for your workshop here today. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Thank you so very much for the wonderful introduction. Appreciate being here today. Greetings from the windy city of Chicago. I'm so glad to be here with you all. And I'm really thrilled to be here to live out in my purpose, which is really to empower emerging leaders just like you with the skills to really drive and not drift in your career. Now, when I talk about driving, that requires your ability to lead from any seat, which is what we're talking about today. But who can tell me what you think that means? When we say lead from any seat, what do you think that means? And I just wanna let you know, I like, I like to call in people, that's how I roll. So if you're off camera, you're not, you're not exempt from <laughs> me picking on you. So Ronick, Thank you for coming today. I want to hear from you. What do you think when I say lead from any seat? What comes to mind for you? Okay. Uh, leading from any seat? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I would define that as um, just having the power to influence others, uh, no matter where you rank in uh, a business or where you work. Thanks for sharing, Ronick. So Ronick, you are absolutely on the right track. So leading from your seat essentially is just about doing exactly what you mentioned and then just leading yourself, leveraging your skills, your talents to really achieve the desired results that you want in your career through others right from where you are today, right from the seat that you're in. So you see this leadership that we're talking about today, it doesn't rely on titles or it doesn't rely on symbols of power. So whether you're remote, whether you're back in the office or even hybrid, today I'm gonna to teach you, you're gonna learn what it takes to take ownership of your career journey and elevate your outcomes to really reach the fulfillment and the results that you desire a lot smarter and a heck of a lot faster. So I'm gonna share some tips with you that have taken most professionals almost half of their careers to learn. So regardless of your job title today, you're gonna to walk away with some tools that you can start with uh, learning today and applying today that's going to allow you to positively influence, positively influence others, navigate and thrive at your best from where you are. So I'm gonna share a number of suggestions with you three to be exact, and some of these may work for you, they may not, but what I'm gonna ask you today is to consider at least one thing that you're going to take away and immediately apply that are going to help you reach your goals, okay? So to kick off, we asked you um, a question. We asked you two questions, right? We had a poll to just get a temperature check of where you are in your career and how confident you feel. So let's check on what you said. So let's see, 57%, we have emerging leaders, we have some mid-careers coming in second, and then early careers at the same time. So some of you all are in a place where you want to advance in your career. Some of you all are desiring a career change. And then some of you all have just gotten started. Now it looks like many of you are either somewhat or very confident and your ability to lead from any seat. I like to hear that. I like to hear that you're already confident. So wherever you are, I'm gonna trust that we're gonna share with you some information today that's gonna really elevate where you're from. So if you're already confident, I'm loving the confidence as well from the group. If you're already confident, we're gonna take you to a level that's even higher. So I'm excited about today. All right, so moving on, let's talk a little bit 
about what we're here for. So this evening, I'm going to share with you through my lived experiences and proven practices, there's going to be three steps that's going to really put you in the driver's seat of your career and even build the confidence that you walked in with today so that you can kill it in this second half of this year, right? I can't believe we're already in May. So you have, what, about six, seven more months to really kill it this year. Now, these three ways include... Number one, leveraging savviness through self-awareness. Now, what that is about is leading with the power of self-awareness to authentically lead yourself and influence others. The second key is to really focus on managing and communicating up. Now, this is one of the things that I wish someone would have told me when I started out in my career. I'm going to share with you a communication tool and a couple of tips that are going to help you manage up and influence the culture that you really desire to elevate your professional outcomes. And then finally, you cannot get anywhere in the world without this. We're going to talk about building winning relationships that are going to be able to open doors and advance you in your career. So you all, these are three things that absolutely changed my career trajectory. And like I said, I wish someone would have told me sooner. So when you hear my story, you'll know why. So if you're ready to accelerate in your career a lot smarter, smarter, farther, and faster than when you walk in, I need a, to see a whole bunch of let's go in the chat. Type let's go with a whole bunch of exclamation marks. Or, that, or we're going to sit right here. <laughs> okay? Right in this seat. All right. I see some let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's go. I, I bet you all are ready. And I'm ready too. All right. So question for you. Did you all know that according to Reuters, there are about 75%, 74% of professionals that are entering the workplace today that are feeling unprepared to lead and succeed in their career. And given the change in workplace, the pandemic has really forced us to rethink our roles and the impact that we want to have in our lives and in the world. There's even 80% of professionals right now that want to change their careers. And then sometimes they hit this wall or either they end up hop hopping from job to job searching for fulfillment because they're trying to identify how do I lead myself in the right direction? What's important to me? And if you're feeling that way right now, you're not alone. And that was definitely me entering the workforce. So got a question for you. Can I share with you a quick story? Type yes if you're ready to quit, hear a quick story in the chat. Yes? All right, all right. Kylie said yes. Krista said yes. All right, let's go. All right. So let me share with you a quick story. All right. So exhibit A, this is college canvas. My graduation from U of I, I was bright-eyed and ambitious, just ready to take on the world and make my mark. Now, this picture is a little fuzzy, as you all can see. Can anyone guess why it may be a little, a little fuzzy? I'll give at least one person a guess. Tom, let me guess why you think this picture is fuzzy. Uh, because you are very experienced in your field. <laughs> no, well, that's a good try, good try. It's actually because I may be dating myself a little bit. I'm still on the cusp of being a, a millennial, but this picture was taken from my graduation in 2005 with the flip phone. So oh, don't judge me, but this is what we have here just for the sake of today. But you can see I was so excited. I thought I had did everything right, you all. Everyone told me to go to school, get good grades, get a job. And now I enter the real world and nobody told me what to do when I got there. There was so much that I just did not know. Things like how to build the right winning relationship how to navigate workplace politics, and there's lots of those, how to communicate up. But most importantly, I will tell you that I wasn't self-aware. Self-awareness was my biggest gap, and I didn't know about myself, what I was good at, and how to take those skills and channel them in a way as I navigated the organization in a really <laughs> not so great way actually, to really, I needed to be able to contribute in ways that were going to work for me. There's a quote that says, our common enemy is the ignorance of our upbringing. Now, what that means is for me, you see my upbringing in my environment had not exposed me as a first generation college student from the inner city west side of Chicago 
how to, it had exposed me to many of the opportunities that my peers in the workplace had. Many of them had been raised in environments that afforded them awareness and exposure to the skills that I mentioned about building relationships and connecting with others. And I even had to learn how to navigate in environments where I was the only one that looked like me. So as a result of not knowing these various interpersonal skills and other things that challenges that came along, I spent five years struggling to see, succeed watching many of my peers excel as I felt left, while I felt left behind. So my job performance, the decisions I made, the success, all of that suffered. And every day I came home feeling like this person you see on this next slide. Every day I felt like this. I felt like I just had to come home and ball up and cry. And hopefully none of you have felt like that in your career. But sometimes when we, when we navigate, we face certain challenges along the way. And I'm here to tell you that sometimes it takes a perpetual state of discomfort in your life that will bring you to action. And it was so much wrong going on that I had to figure out how the heck was I going to take control of my life in my career? That's a good question. Has any of you ever felt this way? How am I gonna get in a driver's seat? How am I gonna take control of my life and my career? So you asked me, what did you have to do, Candace? All right, I'm so glad you asked. All right, so what became possible? What did I have to do? So then in the next slide, you'll see that I've placed here what you see as Candace's career journey. Now, this is kind of what it looked like for me. At the age of 27, well, navigating along my career, let's start here. So I graduated from U of I, I cho you know, chose a major that was hard enough, picked this first job, thought it was gonna be great, experienced all of, this, all of these performance failures um, along the way. And it was just crazy hitting one roadblock after another, trying to understand how to lead myself, how to understand myself, how to get the career, how to get the results that I wanted in, in my career. And at the age of 27 was when I hit what I call a quarter life crisis, right? Not a midlife, I was only like 27, right? So a quarter life crisis that just marked this moment where I was found myself having a panic attack, driving into work. And I ended up, managed to pull my car to the side of the road and I sat there just shaking just shaking with my head in my hands, crying out of control, just saying, how the heck did I get here? Now, I'm pretty sure in that moment, I used a few other choice words because I was like kicking and screaming, but it was clear that I hadn't been intentional about leading and navigating my career. And I did not have the skills to do it well. I didn't want to drift in my life any longer. I needed and I wanted and I had to drive. So I had to figure out what was I going to do to lead from that particular seat. I didn't have the title. I didn't have the power in my, in my organization or anything. So what is, what is the first thing I needed to do? The first thing that we must do is to get savvy through your self-awareness, all right? So to change, to, to, to make sure that I was able to lead from any seat, changing my trajectory and influencing others, as leaders from where you are, you must really strive to be conscious of the things that can work for you and against you, all right? So positively influencing others, making sure that you contribute from where you are, the first step to do is get savvy through self-awareness. So what do I mean when I say that? Savvy through self-awareness. Self-awareness, number one, is the conscious knowledge of one's own characters, your feelings, your motives, and your desires. So one of the things that I did, the first thing I did was really use this amazing tool that someone shared with me called a core values compass. Does anyone, is anyone familiar with, has anyone taken a core values exercise before? If you have, share it in the chat. If you've actually done a core values exercise before. So, yes, okay, Krista, you have. You have, Krista, Krista, what? Okay, Kayla, you have, but you're not, you, <laughs> but you're interested. All right, Krista, share with me from, from the core values exercise you took, what did it help you to understand? What did you learn from your core values exercise? Or maybe even share one core value with us that you know that helps lead and guide you as you lead from where you are. 
So I learned um, that I was easily triggered by uh, conflicts with my core values. And so the, the two core values, and Dr. Faber will probably laugh, um, but my, my two core values that I determined through my survey were accountability and authenticity. Ah, ah, so how did that show up in terms of how you lead today? Um, I really support my staff to bring ideas and work to the table that reflect who they are. Um, like I don't, I don't guide people to take uh, kind of like, like the existential glitter off of the things that they're doing. I don't okay. try to oversimplify um, the concepts that they bring so that you can see who they are come through in their work. Nice. I like that. Just to hear this is like music to my ears because you're so self-aware of how you're showing up. And that's great. Thank you so much for saying, Krista. So before you can lead from any seat, what you want to make sure that you understand is what's under your hood, right? To get in a driver's seat, what is under your hood? Now that's going to invo involve this, this, this activity called this core values exercise, which we're going to allow, which we're going to share with you outside of um, today's session. But it's the fundamental beliefs, core values are the fundamental beliefs or the principles that guide you, your behaviors and your decisions as a person. It shows how you tick, what, how you tick, what's important to you, what, what you value and how you're showing up every day. It tells you your values help you understand what you bring to the table that no one can quite bring just like you, what actually makes you shine. So you need to get clarity on these things and how to perform consistently in this particular place. So if I were to ask one of you right now, um, you know, at the start of your career, you know, we're all just happy to be along the journey, right? And you start along the journey and you're just happy to have a job, but then you start experiencing in the culture, the good, bad, and the ugly. So I want you to take a couple minutes, just one minute, each of you to just think back to your work experience and what helped you realize and what an experience, I want you to think back to the experience that helped you realize what was important to you. And what was important to you and what was not in that? Well, well, I'll put it this way. What was important to you in that moment that you experienced that helped you understand, I value something in particular in my career or in particular in my role? It could have been something good that was happening. It could have been something not so good and negative. As a result of that experience, type one thing that you value most in your career in the chat. One thing that you value most in your career. One thing that you value most in your career. Let's see what people are putting in the, okay, Callie said accountability. Krista, I think you said, uh, uh, Krista, I think you said accountability too. Mm -hmm. Linda, you have compassion, Ken, compassion. I like that, yes, I, can, I agree, feeling accomplished. Ronick feeling accomplished. I like that. So a number of us have many things that drive us. And, and, and if you take a moment and use this tool that we're going to help you with um, and, and help you to, to increase your self-awareness, understanding these things early on will help you to make certain decisions, navigate and influence others within your environment. But we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. And thanks for sharing. So next slide. Next slide, benefits of, 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 the val of leading a value and strength-based life. So the benefits of those are you're gonna be three times more likely to have an excellent quality of life, six times more likely to be engaged and enjoy your job. So if you tell me that, I'm automatically like, sign me up. How do I get more self-aware? Where are the tools that I use? So you can really read the slides that you read the slide that you hear see here. But who wouldn't look forward? To, who would want to look forward to going to work even more by understanding themselves and gaining that self-awareness? And this is one of the tools that will allow you to lead from any seat. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the core values very quickly. So when we talk about our core values compass, it will. The, the exercise that you will receive will ask you a number of questions that will really poke at to get to the things that you understand to be your values and help you understand what's steering you. So for example, these are my 
six core values that I operate on every day. Faith, helping others, growing and growth and learning, integrity, creativity, and adventure. So what you do when you identify your core values, what you can always go back and, and guide and do, I should say, a check, like um, what are we, like a like a, a, a gut check against any decisions that you're making in your life. Run them against your core values compass and say, hey, is this important to me? What, you know, should I do X, Y, or Z? So I'll give you some examples of what this could look like. When you identify your core values, when you are making decisions along your career, it could be a new project, a new position. It could even be a trip to Thailand. What you're going to do is go back and, and after you've identified from thinking about and reflecting on the meaningful moments in your life career, what made you happiest, most proud, your most disappointments and failures, things like that, you create this value, this values compass and you keep it in front of you to help you guide you and make decisions. So for instance, if you're making a decision for a new work project, for me, growth and learning is top is, is number three for me, but it's always at the top of my list. If it is at the top of your list, then it could be the reason why you would say, hey, I wanna go after this new project, or I wanna go after this new position. It's going to allow me to help others more. And that's something that's important to me. Trip to Thailand, a friend of mine called me up years ago, like within weeks and was like, you wanna go to Thailand? I was like, absolutely no question about it. Why? Because I value adventure. I, I'm adventure. I moved the world around to make that trip happen. And then I went for two weeks because I wanted to make sure that I was living in my values and what was important to me. And it feels good to do it. So, if, so to lead from any seat, the first thing you have to do is understand what's under your hood. All right. We're going to talk about, I'm going to fly through the, the, your strength, but there's a tool that you can use. And there's many personality tools out here that will help you also understand some of your strengths. That is what changed my trajectory as well. Understanding who you show up as and what you're innately good at. I'm innately a learner. I love to learn things and teach people and help other people grow. So I am naturally going to make sure that I, that I gravitate toward opportunities that allow me to help others. And restorative, futuristic, input, belief. There's an assessment that will allow you to learn more about yourself and gain this self-awareness through your strengths that allow you to perform better, ex develop stronger relationships, communicate better, and even make more money. But you have to do the work to know yourself first, all right? So I spent the most time on number one because it is essential that you have to know what you what's under the hood to lead from any seat, all right? All right. Well, this last slide says, to thine own self be true. And, and we've all heard that, but ultimately it's about embracing what life is trying to teach. Pay attention to the things that you value, because as you use them along your journey, they're going to help you make sure that you're on the right track and you're leading from where you are. All right. So the number two thing, the way to lead from any seat is to make sure that you're managing up and communicating with influence um, in your work core. To, to, to really influence the work culture that you desire and to elevate your professional outcome. So I had to learn this the hard way. So when I say managing up, someone come off mute and tell me what does that mean to you? Managing and communicating up. What would that look like? It's kind of like making life easier for your manager, right? Yes, making life easier. That's a perfect way to say it. So managing up refers to doing whatever you can to make your boss's job easier, right? So essentially you're uh, managing, say it again? So as someone who is in the point in their career where they have more people who they are uh, managing than people who manage them, yes, I can just say the, the, the best people that I work with are people who uh, trust me to tell me what they see. Mm. And, um, the idea that somebody would actually um, speak, you know, speak up and say, what is it that they see from where they're sitting that could make us all more effective? Yes, right. make your manager more effective. That's great, but really make the team more effective. Uh, and the ability to, to deliver that message in a way that is courageous and is honest, and yet also recognizing that your boss is still a person. 
mm -hmm. and they want to receive information just like you want to receive it in a in an empathetic way that's a real strength so i absolutely I'm a big fan of that Absolutely, Ken. Thank you for sharing that. I think that that is ex extremely important. We often talk about, um, especially if you're, like you said, leading others, creating a culture of feedback, right? A culture of trust and feedback so that your those that report to you can feel comfortable coming to you to share openly um, ways that the, that the organization, that the team can improve and will allow you to understand some of their needs, what's important to them to allow you to lead from where you are and help them and serve them at your best as, as a leader. So I love that, Ken. Thank you so much for sharing that. Definitely. So whether you are leading others or you're leading um, or, or you're managing up and we're always managing up because even the managers have managed. Right. And the leadership have leaders. So think considering that you're thinking about ways to anticipate, anticipate your manager's need, communicating ways that show priority and you're seeking and when you're when you're giving feedback um, and making it easier for them to learn a little bit more about you. There's a tool that you can use that I think that helps everyone, no matter if you're the leader or if you're reporting into a leader. And that's on the next slide here. What you see here is this tool called the user manual. And this to me is a golden tool that anyone can use within, within a team. So what this does here, you can see the little quadrants you, you see. So whether you've just started in a role, if you're leading a team um, or others, as you build trust and relationships with your team, you have to understand what others need from you and do you understand what you need from others? So you, so using this tool in your next one-on-one -on -one, um, with your leadership or with your team members, you can gain a better understanding of how both of you all operate. How do you want to be treated? What do you care about? How, what are your strengths? You know, ultimately, what do you value most? What are the opportunities that you care about? Or even what are you struggling most with right now? So sharing this with each other, this can be an instrumental tool to building a better relationship, deepening trust with your team members or your leadership. And both of you know how to help you operate in a, in a way that's easier for each other to honor each other and foster really high trust relationships. So if you haven't seen this before, I, I recommend that we have this resource for you as a takeaway to, to to use one of these tools, to use this tool to build a relationship so that they can understand what you, you need from them. Your ability to share this type of information with your leadership allows you to manage up, allows you to manage and lead up, all right? The second thing I wanna mention when we talk about communicating up is the biggest flex. You hear people say, oh, my biggest flex was this, my biggest flex for that, right? A lot of people as millennials and Gen Z, we say that is a communication style. Now hear me out when I say this, one of the biggest challenges I had in my career and most professionals have is face the challenge of not being able to flex your communication style to leadership. If I could tell you a story really quickly, um, I had a, a SVP, Senior Vice President that I reported into early in my career and I was responsible for an $8 million budget. Why they gave an $8 million budget to little old me, I don't know. I guess they trust me to do to do something right with it. But anyway, I my job was to synthesize all information from people across the organization. And then I would walk into this meeting with, with, with Mark. And Mark, one day, I was nervous as I don't know what. And I was big into, I'm, I'm a very detailed type person, if you haven't noticed already. And... I'm used to giving people all the facts, all the details, all the little things that came to all the little budget line items. So I walk in the room with, with, with Mark and my manager who reported into Mark gives me the opportunity to present to him. Mark sits at the table, we, the three of us sit there. He says, all right, Candace, you know, so you've been managing the bus budget, what's your angle? Tell me the story. So that was my opportunity to share with Mark at a very high level the information he wanted to know. He's a leader. He wants to hear succinct information right away what's important to him. But what did I do? I spew out like a waterfall all the little details of the budget. And 
at that point, I'm looking at Mark, I'm looking at Sarah, who is my manager, and their faces are just, just turning completely, <laughs> like, they didn't even know what to do at that point. And I feel myself like sinking in the seat lower and lower. And so Sarah interrupts me and she says, Mark, I'm sorry. What I apologize for Candace. What she's trying to say is, and then from then on, they had a conversation. I felt sat there and I felt so small. And in that day, I learned that I needed to understand how to flex my communication style in front of leadership. Because at that level, Mark is big time. He needs to know the high level points. How do I give him, how do I communicate to him very succinctly what the main point is and give him supporting details and anything else he wants to know, he'll ask for it. So I encourage you to make sure that you're understanding how to communicate with people at various leadership levels. There's tons of resources out there that can help you and always feel, re feel free to reach out to me to help you as well. So that's the biggest thing you can do, learn how to flex your communication style and manage up. All right, really quickly, we're gonna go to the last, the third thing that is going to help you to lead from where you are today. And that is about building winning relationships and social capital. So these are, this is about building winning relationships that are going to open your door, open doors and advance your career. So the next slide just simply talks about two things, is making sure that you are fostering trust and that fostering trust, and at any point in your career, find a problem and fix it, especially if you've just started out in your, in your career. So fostering trust is about, there are various ways that you can do this, whether you're hybrid, whether you're in-person or not. You wanna ask questions and get to know people first. Then you listen. And after you listen and understand information, you lean in, okay? So do what you say you're going to do. Honor your commitments. Be helpful. Find ways, unique ways you can be helpful. Connect with them in different ways areas of, of, of um, the organization or even understanding like how, you know, how they connect with their family or what happened to them over the weekend. I want to know for one of you all, how are you currently fostering and building trust right now? Especially in this, in this, you know, this virtual world that we're in. What's one thing that, that you're doing that works well for you to build relationships? Who have we not heard from? Who wants to come off mute and share? Um, so, I mean, I can speak up here. I just sure. actually started a new position um, about four, I'm in my fourth week now. So it's okay. pretty new. Um, and congratulations. My, <laughs> thank you. My supervisor uh, was actually out with COVID a couple weeks ago on my second week there. So we were communicating a lot through email and on phone. Um, and, you know, the things that she was asking me to do, I just made sure that like the communication was on par because she wasn't in the office and we weren't seeing each other face to face. So everything that, you know, I was doing or she was asking me to do, I made sure to like shoot her an email or a text message when it was done or give her an update if it wasn't done for whatever reason. And I think just staying on top of the communication, you know, really keeping her in the loop made a difference because she wasn't there to keep an eye on things. Good, good. Thank you, Kylie, for sharing that. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And then so many people are communicating nowadays if they're not in person in ways that they're, you know, using chats, using all the features that you have. You can have like a quick coffee, a virtual coffee chat with someone, even in, in using the various tools and remote tools we have today. So if there's any, any questions about that, you can ask that. So finally, this tool that we're going to give you to walk away with, and I'm only going to spend a moment on this, is after this session, you can apply this right away, ways to build your social capital action plan. You're building your social capital. So what that is, is how are you building relationships around you? 
you're going to be able to write down the name of a person who has the most influence over you in the workplace and then understand who that person is, how well respected they are or other people who respect them within the organization and understand specifically what you can do to spend more time with this person, to build more, to build a, a better relationship. Can you volunteer to do some things with this person for things that they understand, requesting an informational um, meeting or even getting to um, a meeting early, whether it's virtual or not, and sitting next to them or, you know, asking them questions in the chat directly. You want to be able to do this with different people and make sure that you're focused on this, focus your energy on this, because this will allow you to create the influence and build relationships. This is not about kissing up or anything like that. It's building your relationship so you have the social capital you need to influence and lead and impact up impact others and get the results that you want in your career from any seat. You want to repeat this process with every person who you think is critical to your professional success in the workplace and beyond. So you will have this as a follow-up tool for today. All right, so finally, just to wrap us up, We've talked through three different things today, three different keys to lead from any from um, any seat, right? So savviness through self-awareness, understanding how to get underneath, you know, your hood and understand what <laughs> your hood, understand what makes you tick, what's important to you, what your core values are. Then we talked about managing and communicating up. So ultimately how to influence your work culture, other people, understanding how to communicate at the right leadership level so that no one dismisses you. Because in that situation with Mark, I never got the chance to present to him again. Sarah never gave me the opportunity. Why? Because I did not know how to succinctly get to the point, communicate and influence up. That was a bad thing on my, on my reputation and it affected me going forward. But, but if leadership can see that you can get to the point, get there quickly and arrive at your goals, you'll be able to influence and, and, and create that reputation that allows other people to see, ah, they have something, they, they have what it needs to, to really you know, lead within this organization. And then finally, building running relationships that are going to open doors for you and advance your, your career. So after you've done the work in these, in, in these areas, you want to play full out, okay? Play full out. And that can look different from everyone, but you're gonna gain the confidence that you need by making sure that you focus on these areas so that you can ultimately navigate successfully in your life and career. For me, after gaining competence in these areas, I excelled in ways that I never thought. And I ended up resigning um, to, in, in my role, as you mentioned earlier, you know, Linda, someone did to start my own business, Pivotal Impact. And I was, I, was it scary? Hell yes, it was scary. But it challenged me to ne level up. And I no one could have convinced me that after following these three steps to lead from any seat, that I'd be the entrepreneur I am today and navigating my own terms and leading and affecting people effectively across the world. So it's been six years and it was a natural progression to where I am today by taking charge and ownership of my career and leading from where I was. So I, I charge you today. My call to action to you is to take ownership of your life, your career, starting today. And so I'm going to leave you with this, this last slide that you see here. I'm going to leave you with this. Ultimately, you have to, this quote I love, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win. You must prepare to win and you must expect to win. So put in the work, know yourself well enough to navigate at your best and you will absolutely win. We only have one life. So lead it, all right? Thank you so much for having me here today. I am open for questions. If you have any, I'll turn it back over to the team. I think we went a little long, but I'm always willing to ask answer questions any other time as well. So thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, Candace. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll transition right into questions and answers. Um, we received advanced questions um, as well during registration. So we'll review some of those now first. Um, the first one, how much outside of work hours do some of the strategies that you shared 
require? You know, how much homework do we have to do? <laughs> <laughs> how much homework? Well, you know, there, there's, ah, I'm, I'm going to fumble this, this quote, but there's a quote that talks about um, the quality of your life is the effort um, of the sum of time that you're willing to put into it. So I would put that back on you to, to, to challenge you to say, you know, how much, how much is what I want worth? So mm -hmm. I, I think that it's going to look differently from different people. We have all different learning styles, right? Someone may go to, to, to um, you know, someone may be here today and be able to apply the tools right away. Someone may go to YouTube and need to do a little bit more research and do a little bit more learning on their own because leadership is a lifelong learning journey. So we're never stopping that process. So as we navigate situations in our career, we're going to we're going to stumble across some challenges that we have that require more and more work and effort on our part. So I would say that you know it, it's going to be it's going to vary based on who you are. Um, you know, like there's this ten thousand hour rule that we hear in terms of learning and being the experts on things, but mm -hmm. but it's all about you know the journey and not the destination. So um, on average, if I just had to give you an hour, you know, I can't necessarily give you hours, but I would just say, just start today and see where that takes you and where that gets mm -hmm. you to. So thanks for yeah. that question, Nick. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it sounds kind of to me like you, you get out of it what you put into it basically, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so what are some techniques maybe that you could use to, um, tactfully disagree with someone higher in the organization structure that you might have to 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 lead up to ah so that you can tactfully disagree with someone mm -hmm. um the biggest thing them. that i said it, it again or someone that you're managing up to yeah absolutely um i would say that in my career um i learned something i learned a a uh what do I want to say? Not not like a, a, a well, a tip years ago from a crucial conversations class. I don't know if you all have ever heard of crucial conversations or the topic of just having difficult conversations. And I used to find myself in situations with leadership where um, there were often times where I would disagree and I had a different point of view and want a perspective I wanted to share. And um, what I would always do first is listen, always listen. Um, to what is being said, and then ask the question of, can I share my perspective? Or can I, can I share an alternative point of view? And, and, and if there's trust built in that situation, just making that ask up front, I think is the, is the best way to start it. And then if there's, if there's challenges that you have with understanding you know, what's particularly going on in that, in that situation, what I learned is that this, this phrase that says, help me to understand, help me to understand why you're feeling this way, or help me to understand how you came to this conclusion. That is a really um, good phrase to use to disarm people and to really put the ball in their court, to have them to simply explain the point of view that they're coming from. So you don't sound like you're attacking someone in leadership. You're just saying, help me to understand how you arrived at that. I love to share my perspective as well. Mm -hmm. So hopefully those, those two, um, two, two terms or uh, phrases can help someone today. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, we kind of, we kind of touched on that earlier, but like saying to remember that you're your bosses are human too and like to be, you know, treated compassionately. And, absolutely. And, with empathy yeah. and every, absolutely. Yeah. And then and, and with empathy. Yeah. Um, let's see. So um, I had put a question in the chat earlier. I think maybe you kind of answered it already, but is there, is there a good way to communicate my core values to the leaders at my workplace? You know, what's maybe the best way to do that in a organic kind of way? <laughs> in an organic kind of way. Hmm. So not so not actually listing it out for them and saying, here's what I value type of thing. Yeah, I guess, you know, outside of just maybe a, the, the, the job interview, when you're maybe asked questions about yourself, like how else can you maybe talk about yourself in, the, in this kind of way after that fact without just, you know, blabbering out about yourself all the time? You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, that's a good question, Nick. I think that a good way to do that in number one is communicating your values. It, it Recognize that it doesn't always have to be verbal. It can be in the way that you show up every day and your behaviors 
and and how you're how you're communicating, how you're driving um, results within the organization, um, what type of opportunities and projects that you're leaning into. Um, or how you're connecting with people on your team. Um, those are various different ways that you can actually show your values. But I personally like direct communication. Not all people do. So like you said, outside of the interview, you can talk about the organization's core values. And you always want to make it about, you know, what's in it for the team or for the, or for the leadership or for the organization. You can talk a little bit about the organization's core values and then weave yours in there about how yours may align you know, or how you are experiencing growth in certain areas because of how you connect with the values of the organization. But using the tool that I shared earlier, um, the user manual, I think is really valuable and key, especially, especially for anyone in their career, whether you're early careerist, mid-careerist, or, you know, at any level, just helping people to understand what, what is important to you. So, so your values can be listed there, ways you like to receive feedback, ways you like to communicate with others, your strengths, a number of these things, I think are just helpful to share with others so that you can get the best result for yourself and for um, the team and the organization. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, Absolutely. Thanks, I hope Anna. it was helpful. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're just at about time to close out unless anyone has a last minute question they want to raise their hand with in the in the chat or and, and i'm always happy to to take an email for questions as well if something pops up you know that that's how it usually works right we're like dang i forgot to ask that question so i'm always here for that <laughs> awesome well i'll pass it back then to michelle um to close this out Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nick. And thank you so much, Candice. This has been a powerful session. I'm looking forward to receiving the resources so I can start applying some of these tips and best practices uh, in order to continue advancing my career. So thanks for the time. 